this is Anna from CV Cat Realty. Today I'm here to talk to you about the pros and cons of the healthcare systems in Portugal. And for those of you who don't know, I am the owner of CV Cat Realty. CV Cat Realty is a relocation and investment agency that supports expats in relocating to Portugal. And we are a, a team of locals that aims to be your guide on the inside. We support with all kinds of things, including renovations, construction, getting uh, your paperwork in here settled, getting your visa settled, and basically supporting you in the whole process until you are fully integrated into the lifestyle you want to have. And of course, we help you find the ideal location for the lifestyle you want to have. If you are interested in this kind of services, please do check our website at www.cvcatrealty.com. So today I'm going to talk to you about the pros and cons of the health systems in Portugal. So in Portugal, one of the biggest pros is of course the free public health system. And it does have a lot of advantages, but it is far from being per perfect. So one of the advantages if, is, of course, the costs. So it is not fully free, but it's basically as if, for example, uh, a visit to urgent care has a cost of 18 euros. And if you are considered on a um, struggling socioeconomic uh, uh, tier, you do not have to pay anything. Uh, so this is, of course, a big advantage. The disadvantage is that, like everything, it isn't perfect and it is very understaffed. So, public hospitals, it, uh, um, some are very well equipped, some aren't, and in general, they are all understaffed. So, there are very long waiting lists for pretty much everything, to be honest. And if you do not have an urgent problem, it take, can take you years to get consultations, surgeries, and uh, basically care for a non-urgent problem. For the urgent problems, ten, things tend to work a lot better. However, uh, depending on the location and affluency, urgent services are sometimes very overwhelmed too and they can ver have very long trial systems. So there are a lot of scandals around elderly and people with truly urgent issues waiting for up to three hours to get care, which is of course a huge problem. And this is mostly due to being understaffed. So this is a internal politics organization problem. So the Portuguese government is, should be giving more budget to the health system, but there is also the private system. So if you are able to afford having a private insurance, I definitely recommend having one and using private hospitals. Actually, the doctors are often the same. So a lot of doctors that work in the public system also work in the private system and it's usually more than possible to book consultations with a, a doctor that is on the uh, public system, on the private system and vice versa. Of course, on the public side, you tend to have a lot longer wait lists. So when it comes to the actual cost of the private health insurance, it is actually very low for uh, especially Americans. I have a lot of American clients that get shocked with the low cost of our private insurances. To give you an example, I am currently paying, I believe it's 88 euros for my private health insurance and I have a pretty high coverage. Uh, I have ambulatory, which is basically consultations and uh, most of the day-to-day -day care up to 50,000 euros, which may not seem a lot for Americans, but here in Portugal, a major surgery, if it costs you more than 10,000 euros, it is going to be an extremely complex surgery with very high-end equipment. So I would say that 50,000 euros would cover at least two major surgeries. 
and for co-payments i only pay about 15 euros per consultation on the private care i pay um i think it's 60 euros for mris i pay 15 euros for blood analysis whether it's 10 or 20 uh things that i'm studying so i am pretty happy with my house uh insurance actually it rose a lot in price in the last few years it costed me 64 euros back when i started it a few years ago i started it like five or six years ago and now it is at 88 euros which i find quite a big uh, increase but I know Americans will back to defer <laughs> and actually my coverage has gone up because I chose not to downgrade so I was kind of a middle tier tier and I'm kind of on a higher tier now because of that and so I'm having private health insurance and I definitely recommend that because the wait times on public health can be very disappointing let's leave it as that another a very a great advantage of the portuguese health system is coverage on employment so we employers which i'm one uh, pay a lot of taxes but thankfully the employees do have quite a bit of benefits so you have a very decent sick pay system you actually only start getting paid after 10 days of sick leave but after that you are paid 100% for a, um, I believe it's up to three months and after that it uh, you have to uh, prove that you are sick but mostly you will be getting paid your full salary from the state there is also a very decent maternity leave and overall the employees are very protected on that regard and um, there is a fairly wide variety of choice when it comes to doctors and services especially you, if you are in a bigger city on a, a more rural and uh, smaller locations it's going to be a lot more limited probably but uh, lots of people come to the big cities to get treatment uh, because of that and i believe that's the case in most of the um, countries okay so i told you some of the cons where i while i was uh, talking about the pros but i'm now moving to the big cons so one of the biggest cons of the portuguese health system in my opinion is lack of accountability but that's not due to the health system itself it's actually due to the legal system which is something that in my personal opinion has uh, one of the most urgent things to be improved in this country so the legal systems in portugal and the courts and so on work very slowly and very bureaucratically and it is extremely hard to get any kind of sentence it takes a very long time and has a very high cost and um, hospitals especially public hospitals do not do take any measures uh, unless there is very serious malpractice and in order for a doctor to lose their license due to malpractice there needs to be a lot of weaknesses and a lot of complaints which is a big problem uh, the biggest problem on the portuguese health system and it goes both on public and private it's worse on public because in private the the doctors do get uh, fired and um well warned i guess when there are complaints there are internal protocols to handle those kind of situations but in public because most of the cases they have um board contracts so to say it's very very hard to get anything done so this means that you will have pretty much a, a hit or miss situation when you are looking for a professional care 
and it is very important to have recommendations because of this there are a lot of bad doctors and there are a lot of doctors with terrible bad side manners so that is a very big problem on the portuguese health system too is the human side there is a concerning lack of humanity in portuguese medicine and in general most of the university courses and so on they tend to focus on the technical sides and not focus on the uh, human sides. I don't know if that has improved as of late years, but uh, from what I've seen from other areas and people getting out of the courses, I don't think that has been the case, which is a shame, because healthcare is for humans, and it should be a, a, a concern to treat the people with respect. So as a, uh, a woman and as someone who has had serious health problems in the past, so I have endometriosis and it took me five years to get diagnosed because I wouldn't be taken seriously by doctors. And I know this doesn't just happen in Portugal. I, I had surgery last year, but I started having very serious health problems because of this in 2016 so you can say how long that took and it was a terrible journey from a psychological perspective because at some point i just st started believing it was all in my head and i was just being whiny when i wasn't and i had surgery and it's completely different now uh, uh how i felt after the surgery <laughs> It's just, I didn't know my body could work like that anymore. And it's sad, this is a common story here in Portugal. Not just for women, but for other issues, and especially uh, mental uh, care is very unimportant. It's not unimportant, but it's not duly valued. So that is a very big issue. And the, because of that, it's, I believe it's particularly important to get recommendations for care. Because when you just go and book, it's very much a hit or miss. And believe me, it can be a hit. I had a situation like that with my dentist. I love her and it was a random booking. And uh, I just haven't been sticking with her because uh, uh, she's just such an amazing professional. But it's like I was saying, it's a hit or mess and it may take you a few attempts to get the right person. And the lack of accountability does um, concern me a lot. But yeah, I believe that uh, when it comes to equipment, the private hospitals do tend to be a lot better equipped than the um, public hospitals, or at least a lot more modernly equipped and a lot uh, better staffed, so private uh, hospitals do not tend to have lack of staff, and that's definitely a big positive, because things tend to work fairly smoothly. Of course, there are delays, but they are a lot uh, better in the private than in the uh, public, so you will have always the, the doctors that uh, delay their consultations, I think that happens everywhere but in the public it can be extreme uh, like the the how hard it can be to get surgery or even consultations for non-urgent issues when you are just uh, relying on the public system it can be extremely frustrating it can take a very long time just to have any kind of follow-up and if you need any kind of surgery there are usually pages long of wait lists and that's why I keep saying it's always better to have healthcare if you can afford it. Uh, so yeah, in general public services are in very high demand and very low capacity. Uh, private services are a lot more balanced but you do need to have a lot of attention towards the human side of things and finding a good doctor can be very much a hit or miss especially when it comes to the human side 
So I believe that gives you an overall overview of how the public services work. Um, if you do have any other specific questions, feel free to leave them down and we always check up what you say and we love to get feedback. If there is any topic you would like me to cover, I always try to look at your feedback and get these videos out according to it. Our goal is always to get useful information out there. This channel is updated every week, so please feel free to subscribe if you want to get weekly information about Portugal and about cities of Portugal and overall. If you are interested in coming to Portugal, I'm sure you will have a lot of valuable content in here. You can always check our website if you are uh, interested to move with us. All our services are listed in a very transparent way. We always list our prices and everything. And you can also book a free, uh, free clarity call if you have any questions. Um, our website is www.cvcatrealty.com and you can also contact us at the email contact at cvcatrealty.com. I hope that this was helpful and I hope to see you all next week. Bye.